purposely simple, flat but unique design of both characters and location, which is somewhat reminiscent of American strip and indie comics, and also given its multi-layered post-nuclear holocaust colorful yet dark fantasy setting, Adventure Time seems a perfect fit for a comic book tie-in, aka a way to further expand its universe through the means of a sequential art form in Star Wars fashion. The publications were handled by Kaboom Comics, which is also responsible for the recent Darkwing Duck graphic novels. But today we aren't discussing about this particular series, we will be focusing instead on its most spectacular spin-off, Marceline and the Scream Queens. I have stated many times before how ridiculously well written are both the characters of Marceline, radical thousands years old queen of all vampires, and Princess Bubblegum, damsel in distress slash zombie racing mad scientist. If the now legendary What Was Missing episode proved anything, aside from some more or less awkwardly disguised homosexual tension between the two of them, is that both Marcy and Peebles have a terrific chemistry. Let's see, polar opposites in personality, widely different backgrounds, education, life's experience, and a shared past shrouded in mystery. I'm surprised nobody thought of giving this to their own series before. Marceline and the Scream Queens narrates the various exploits of the titular and dead rock star, her own band, and Princess Bubblegum as they team up for the Scream Queens' first ever epic world tour of rock and self discovery. Or at least, I would assume that's the direction the story will follow after the very promising way it took off in the first number. The only one I currently own have read so far and will review for this episode. Six different versions of the same cover were made for this first entry, and by looking at them, one can tell all the various artists put their souls and talents in their making, as they are simply gorgeous and awe-inspiring. They commune the basic idea of what to expect from this spin-off. An epic tale of epic epicness! An intimate delving into the character's relationship a rock and roll journey of awesomeness! Something pretty cool in general. Unfortunately, I'm stuck with the weakest cover of the bunch. Make no mistake though, it's not bad, it just doesn't compare with the sheer emotionally grasping quality of the others. On the first page, we are presented with the members of Marceline's group in the appropriate form of a flyer for their concert. We have Kayla, the werewolf guitarist, Bongo, the ghost of a famous drummer, or so he says, and the keyboardist Guy. He's just some guy. Marceline is hyped about their very first full-on tour, which she's been waiting to do for a thousand years. Their first stop is the Candy Kingdom's castle, much to people's discontent and little respect for rock music. You're not exactly versed in rock music, are you, Bonnie Bell? Daddy, do you even love me? Well, I wish you'd show it, cause I wouldn't know it. What kind of daddy does daughter's fries? Doesn't look her in the eyes. Daddy, there were tears there. If you saw them, would you even care? <laughs> Bubblegum's perspective about Marcy's music will change drastically when her band performs later tonight in a fantastically drawn sequence, showing her devouring the red smoke preceding their entrance, a thunder hitting her signature battle axe guitar, followed by her throwing it to the heavens, jumping to grab it and perform an electrifying solo in midair. That totally rocked. Afterwards, Marceline shows concern about her performance, troubled by the idea that whatever deeper meaning she was trying to convey through her music didn't come out the way she wanted. This scene denotes the more subtle and interesting aspects of her personality. While her tastes in music might be dubious, all the lyrics she comes up with reflect a portion of herself. They convey her personal issues and troubles, thus serving as a clever device to develop her character throughout the entire show. As such, 
the very idea that their music wouldn't be good enough ahem, to convey said feelings is enough to send her into a personal crisis. That's where Peebles comes in and manages to relieve her friend of that particular stress by stating how much her performance has enriched their life, to the point that she actually wants to join her tour as their manager. And so, Marceline, PB and the rest of the merry group prepare to take off for the Great Ooh Tour, leaving Jake the dog as the interim king of the candy people. That will end well. Ten seconds later. <laughs> As I said before, this comic is spectacular. The artwork is very expressive and appealing, both reminiscent of the source material and quite solid on its own colored paper turf. It completely gets the two main characters and how they are supposed to act and feel around one another. The members of Marceline's band come off a bit bland, but there are five more issues to expand on their personalities. The only real issue lies in the very limited nature of the medium itself, and its inability to reproduce what music feels like in its non-audible digesis, which is too bad considering this looked like the most radical rock concert ever. In addition to the main story, this comic also features a shorter story written and illustrated by Jan Wang, author of Coco Be Good, which has now piqued my interest after seeing her artwork. In conclusion, I am a huge fan of Marceline and Princess Bubblegum, and I am personally very glad that their story has been handled with care by people who know what they are doing. Next time on Adventure Review... It's gaming time!